Do you fancy yourself a bit of a bohemian artiste? If so, this might just be the drink for you. It's a refreshing take on the daiquiri, but with less sugar, um, but with the addition of grapefruit juice and maraschino liqueur. The Hemingway daiquiri, so it also happens to be my mum's favourite cocktail. I can't believe it's taken me this long to make one on here, so I'm sorry for that mum. And stay tuned because I'm going to be showcasing a fun twist on it thanks to our partners at Shaker and Spoon as well. Whether Hemingway himself would actually enjoy the modern iteration of the Hemingway daiquiri is certainly up for debate. And actually whether we should hold him up as any kind of arbiter of taste is as well, because the man may have been a literary genius, but he seems to have been much more concerned with the alcohol content of his drinks than with the flavor. The story goes that he stopped in Havana's legendary La Floridita to use the toilet, and on the way out, he saw some frosty frozen daiquiris lined up on the bar. Sounds delicious, and if that uh, sounds like something you might want to try, then check out my strawberry frozen daiquiri here. But not being one to pass up a drink, he tried one and declared it passable. He said he would prefer it with no sugar and double the rum though. This was whipped up for him and named the Papa Doble and it became his drink of choice. Apparently he once consumed around 16 of these four ounce cocktails in one day. Understandably, normal people didn't find the straight rum and lime blend quite as palatable as Hemingway did, so La Floridita tweaked it a little, so staying true to the no sugar requirement by steering clear of sugar syrup, but using some maraschino liqueur for a hint of sweetness. And then they also added grapefruit juice to sort of soften the lime while it still was nice and tart. Definitely still on the drier end of cocktails, but a bit more balanced. Nowadays, most recipes will call for a small amount of sugar, and to me, it does really need that to round it out, just actually to give it some body. Um, but I do keep it minimal in deference to the great man himself and my mom, because she also doesn't like sweet drinks, and it's important to keep your mom happy. Now for the rum, I'm just going with Pampero Blanco. It's just really nice and clean, got a little bit of fruit and nice and grassy, um, and does have enough body to kind of round out this uh, cocktail because it is a couple of years old and then they just filter it to get it that nice uh, blank hole color. Then you want to use fresh grapefruit juice if you can, but obviously it can vary. So just make sure that you taste and adjust the sweetness or citrus levels if necessary. Maraschino is a cherry liqueur, um, a well-made one like Lixardo will have a dry, almost bitter finish from the cherry pits, which is exactly what you want here. We're going to go in with 60 ml of your Pampero Blanco. This is really quite a clean rum, um, so I like it, you know, quite like a clean and fresh and really zippy cocktail. You can absolutely use something with a little bit more kind of fruit to it, like Plantation Three Star. I was actually going to use Havana as a bit of a nod to, uh, to the origins of this cocktail being in Cuba, but I didn't have any in the bar, so here we are. Then 15 mils of lime juice, 15 mils of grapefruit, then we've got 10 mils of your maraschino, this is such a favorite ingredient of mine. Um, almost the same way that cocktail bitters does. I find it just kind of lengthens the finish on drinks as well with that little bit of dryness. And then just a little five mils of sugar syrup. Then we're gonna pop our tins together and shake as hard as I can. Now, this is one that is really important to taste because grapefruit varies so much, sort of depending um, on the season and just which one you use. Sometimes it will be really, really sour and sometimes a little bit sweeter. That one's pretty bang on actually. That's a, a stroke of luck. Then grab a little glass out from the fridge or the freezer. This one's a little added extra, but I just like to do just a little bit of peel over the top um, just to kind of get that aromatics and stuff going up to your nose. And then you can just get rid of that and your actual garnish is a little cherry. How refreshing does that look? Hemingway daiquiri probably have a little taste of this. I know I already did, but you know, you need the glory sip. Grapefruit is just such a good flavor. Um, and yeah, with that, obviously the um, rum being just like a really nice kind of clean canvas, it's just super, super zippy and fresh. I can definitely see why Hemingway managed to drink so many, not that I recommend it, because uh, I think that would go down far too quickly on a hot day. So this one's for you, mum. 
These kind of fresh and vibrant flavors are so much fun to play with. And that's exactly what bartenders Marshall Altier and Jonathan Burin, if I said that right, have done in this Rums the Word Shaker and Spoon box. Um, Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box. And so each box is based around a specific spirit. So this one's rum. So you can just buy one bottle and then they provide all of the other little bits and pieces like syrups and cordials, bitters, tinctures, mixers, you name it. And then you can recreate world-class cocktails at home. You all know that I'm about elevated drinking made easy. So I am really pleased to partner with these guys again to bring you this episode and show you an awesome twist on the Hemingway daiquiri, which we've, they've called the Hemingway on Nika. So let's see what's in here. Got my little recipe cards and then, ooh, put a little cold brew bean bags iced coffee concentrate. Oh, they've even given you some little cocktail picks if you don't have that. Nori, banana chips. I like this one, it's got lots of little garnishy bits and pieces. Some orange slices. And some little candy ginger. That's actually one of my favorite um, cocktail garnishes because you like get a little snack with your drink and that's always a good thing. And then I still can't get over how cute these little bottles are. So a few different little bitters and so on. Ooh, yuzu sparkling water. I don't know if it's the same in the States, but yuzu just like, if you put that in a cocktail here, it just absolutely flies. Um, you almost have to be careful using it on your cocktail menu. Little honey ginger syrup. Mobby syrup. I've never heard of that before. It kind of sounds similar to um, like to a falernum. So you've got ginger root, lime zest, cinnamon sticks, allspice berries. This is what I mean. It's like cool stuff that you might not even think of. Then we've got a coconut water and a little grapefruit syrup, man. Yes, I'm done. This one I'm gonna do kind of sticking with the theme of the episode, the Hemingway on Nika. Um, and the main kind of flavor, I suppose, going in there. So you've got the grapefruit syrup, which is mimicking the grapefruit that's in the classic Hemingway. Um, but it's also using naranja agria or naranja, I suppose. I don't know, I'm not Spanish as, I did French at school, okay, don't <laughs> make fun of me. Um, but that's a Seville orange for those of us that can't say naranja properly. And that one's just a little shaking cocktail, grapefruit and orange syrup, and then lime juice pimento bitters. Grab my coupe glass from the fridge there. Double strain, it's a little hawthorn strainer and a fine strainer. And then last but not least, my little lime wheel. I always find these notoriously difficult to balance. I deliberately never put them on the list at Bomba because I just can't do it, but that one's staying all right. <laughs> the Hemingway on Nika. Let's see how it tastes. Yeah, yum. It's a bit richer, um, obviously having that orange flavor in there as well as the grapefruit. It's a bit of a, um, a kind of warmer citrus, uh, so not quite as zippy and fresh as the classic Hemingway. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of a Royal Bermuda Yacht Club, if anyone saw has seen me make that. Just got that little spice in there from the pimento, which is not dissimilar to falernum as well. <laughs> I told you that was gonna happen. <laughs> So if you would like to sit back at home and have these kinds of delicious cocktail ingredients delivered to your door every month without you having to put any effort in at all, then click the link below and use code BTB with Cara at the checkout. Um, or you can go to shakerandspoon.com forward slash BTB with Cara and that'll get you $20 off your first box to give it a try. So the Hemingway daiquiri and a delicious twist on it. So now you know.